Uh, welcome back uh, to the Barb and Elizabeth show. Uh, we are in beautiful uptown Sedona, Arizona. We are actually at the Jim Thompson Trailhead at the end of Jordan Road, if you're familiar with Sedona at all. And we are here to roll out a, another new line of stencils. They are all Georgia O'Keeffe inspired. And I was, um, uh, the whole style is based on her abstract interpretation of flowers. Uh, they're all floral, uh, swirly, spirally, curly, organic, curvilinear lines, which as you know, is my favorite. And um, I thought, uh, Barb and I thought that Georgia O'Keeffe would be a, a great person to give a nod to, a great artist to give a nod to, because she, uh, her museum is the only museum in the world that is completely attributed to a female artist and she was prolific into her 90s and um, she's 20th century she uh, only passed away in 1986 she was dedicated to creating art and she made no apologies about the art that she created she loved what she did and I do too Last night we were gel printing until 11 o'clock. We had so much fun playing with the, the 10 new designs. Here's just a little bit of a peek. We're going to show you some of each as we get into the next segment. I'm not usually awake at 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> never mind gel printing to it. So that'll just tell you how inspired we were and how much fun we had. The key to that is giving yourself permission to play. We just played with a lot of different color combinations, experimented and came out with some great results. So you have to, the learning is in the doing. <laughs> but one of the things that you don't see is the stuff that doesn't make the cut. There's stuff that we create that we think feel is not the best thing we want to show you. So just keep in mind that we make mistakes too, frequently. Yes, we had a lot of ones that went in the circular file. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye. Speaking of saying goodbye, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Alrighty. For my technique, I'm going to use the Jack in the Pulpit stencil and I'm going to show you how to do these. Now the important thing to know here is that there are steps that you have to take and there's paper that you have to use in order to create this look. So what is probably the most important is you have to use rice paper. Now this obviously is the rice paper that you see Elizabeth use all of the time. And the reason that this matters, and let me bring in a sheet that I've already got pulled out. The reason that this matters is because this side is shiny. That's the side that faces the plate. But then on the back, it is the, the fiber and pores of the paper are right here and I'm going to add color through the back and that'll make more sense what we when we do it. So these are the colors that I'm working with. I'm going to print Jack in the Pulpit in, this is copper I think, and I'm going to use these four colors put through the back of the paper that's going to create this beautiful watercolor effect. Okay, so the first thing obviously is I've got to get some paint on here. Now we are in Sedona which means it's dry. I'm probably going to be a little bit more generous than normal with the paint plus I want to be able to be certain that I get two prints out of this so now this is looking pretty good so the way that this works is I'm going to take Jack in the pulpit and I'm going to put it down on the plate and then I'm going to take my first sheet of paper again smooth shiny side down well it's not shiny but it's smooth and I'm going to press carefully the whole point here and this is something Elizabeth reminds me every time we get together because I have a tendency to forget is that I want to be certain that I press my fingers against the entire surface of this stencil slash mask so that all of the paint in the openings transfers to this rice paper. That is the important thing because otherwise, and if I take this back and pink, peek, you can see that I've got a nice imprint, but I have in the past had a tendency not to be super careful about pressing to make certain that the paint prints right up against the edge of the mask and then you get this kind of indistinct design that does not do justice to whatever the stencil or mask is. All right, so that looks pretty darn good. Now I'm gonna print what is left on the plate and that's gonna give me a positive and the negative of the design that I will come back and show you once this is dry. I'll show you how we're gonna get all that beautiful watercolor effect. You can see that I've got this print ready to go. So we'll be back in just a second once this is all dry. My Jack in the Pulpit prints are dry, but before I bring them in, I wanna show you the colors I'm going to work with or and the other things. So here I have a big old paintbrush that I'm gonna use. I've got a spray bottle of water to one side. I have two colors of Art, Al Art Alchemy paint 
This one is an Opal Magic that's named Teal Blue, and this is a Metal Leak named Frozen Berries. Now, the thing to know is that the shimmer on these, because we're applying it to the back side of the paper, is not really gonna be evident. So I'm choosing these because I like the colors, not necessarily for the effect. And then I have two Amsterdam acrylic paints. This one is Venetian Rose, and this one is Greenish Yellow. So the whole purpose to this now is as I bring this in, I'm gonna turn the, well, all right, so here we are with Jack in the Pulpit. Right there, I didn't do a really good job pressing my fingers, you'll do a better job. So I'm gonna turn this over, we're gonna work from the back side, and this again is where the rice paper comes in. It's really important, you have to be able to get this wet, and that's what's gonna allow the paint to move. We're gonna thin it down and it'll move. So I'm gonna put some of each of these colors out. It kind of helps me play as I move back and forth. And by back and forth, I mean back and forth over different areas. And that's not wet right there. So now I'm gonna wet my brush, bring it in. And it really, you can start with whatever color you like. And if it helps, remember that you can pick this up and see where these openings are. This is what we're gonna color. The paint I put on is not really gonna affect where the, the copper metallic is. It's pretty much only going to affect the areas that are open. So this is kind of greenery down here, and I want to emphasize that. And if I think that I need more water, I can put more. Now, if you scrub, you'll peel the paper, so don't scrub, just kind of brush the paint on. This is super easy, it's really fun to do, and I'm trying for a little bit of realism here, but nothing says that you have to do that. And now I'm just gonna brush the heavy color off. For some reason, I don't have a paper towel, but we'll work around that. And We'll go ahead and put this in, and I'm gonna bring some of the purple in. And Elizabeth, who is absolutely marvelous, is standing off to the side. <laughs> I am the sous chef. Handing me paper towels. She's the bestest. <laughs> now let's kind of peel this back and see how this looks. Oh, see how pretty is that? I'm gonna end up with a watercolor effect like what you see here. So this, with the metallic in the background is the version that I just worked on. This one where the metallic is the design itself is this one that I haven't actually done yet, but- And we're we back. Will... Okay, give me the hair flip. Here's the hair flip. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so you Barb- have to understand the mindset that's going on here. <laughs> well, but she's all smug now because she had those great results with her bleed through technique, bleeding through the back of the rice paper. And now I got to come up with something that's marginally as interesting. Equally as interesting. Equally as interesting, almost. So anyway, um, we're halfway through, but we want to encourage you to stay to the end because we're going to lay all the papers out and show them close up one by one, and you're going to be inspired even more. So let's go. Here we go. Here we go. So I think of all the prints that I made, this was one of my favorites, if not my favorite. And I think it's mostly due to the color combination and the um, technique. So I'm going to uh, take you through this technique. And um, this one is called Kana, and it is a mask. So I like it because it has some big solid um, positive spaces and big solid negative spaces. And the colors that I'm using, the color combo, I really like this color combo. So this is the um, burnt sienna. That's sort of the, uh, the uh, dark orange color. And then everybody's favorite turquoise. And then for the dark, I'm using Payne's gray. So the first... Um, layer is going to be the Payne's Gray, and we're going to get the um, the ghost print or the uh, pickup print of that. So I'm using two sheets of my favorite rice paper. Um, I love this stuff, as you know, because it has a smooth side that tends to pull the majority of the paint off the plate. So when you're using this, and it's also very sturdy paper, it takes a lot of um, wear and tear, water and printing. So when you use this, you want to make sure you're using the smooth side down on the plate only because that pulls more paint. There's no, there's no reason that says you can't use the other side and you could experiment with that, but I do use the smooth side down. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is put out the Payne's gray. And for this technique, we're using the ghost print. So that means you have to apply a bit more paint because some of the paint is going to adhere to the back of the mask when you take it off and you want to leave as much behind as possible. So you're going to go a little heavier handed with the paint in this technique so that even though some of it will stick to the back of the stencil, that you'll have plenty remaining on the plate. So that's the first step and that's the paint's gray. So I'm going to go pretty heavy with that. 
And then the other key is not to leave it, uh, it, not to leave the mask sitting in the paint for too long so that more of it sticks to the back. So we're gonna do this kind of efficiently and quickly. There we go. So we're gonna put the mask into the paint and then we're gonna take the first sheet of rice paper to remove the paint out of the negative spaces. So then I'm always gonna pull up and look to see if I've removed the majority of the paint out of the spaces. If I need to add a little bit more pressure, I'll do that before I dismount the paper. So I'm gonna come up and just apply a little more pressure in the areas that I need to get a little more detail, but I don't wanna to linger too much on this step because I don't want all the paint to come off on the back of the mask. So now we're gonna lift up the mask and we're left with that beautiful ghost print layer. And that is creating this dark layer. Okay, so the next step is to take a small brayer and to put in the uh, burnt sienna in small areas over the ghost print, but not everywhere because we're gonna pull the print with the blue and we want the blue to show through and the orange to show through. So we're going to apply a little bit of that burnt sienna, but not everywhere. And we're also waiting for this to dry. We wanna make sure that this first layer is nice and dry on the plate before we start putting paint on top of it. So now we're gonna come in and with a small brayer, apply this in small areas. So we're working on a piece of the nonstick craft mat here. And I love that because all the paint is just gonna wipe off of it and we can come back to a nice clean surface and we can also use it as a palette. So we're gonna roll that paint out onto the small brayer and I'm going to then apply it sort of randomly Okay, and then to clean the small brayer, I'm just gonna roll it off onto a piece of paper that's off camera, and I'm back to clean. And then I'm gonna let this dry because we're gonna pull the whole print with the turquoise. So if the turquoise gets stirred up into the burnt sienna, these are just about opposite colors and they will not that will not allow the turquoise to stay vibrant and bright. So we wanna let this dry as well. And then when you brayer the turquoise over, you're just gonna use a light touch. Um, that way you can keep it from stirring up. So we're gonna just brayer it over with a light hand. So while this is drying, I just wanna say how excited I am to be here in Sedona with Barb, making gel prints until all hours of the morning and late in the evening last night. We had an excellent time and we have prints everywhere. And if the owners of this Airbnb could see what was going on in here, they might be really uh, either excited or not. <laughs> Okay, that's probably still tacky in areas. I'm not gonna stick my finger in it, but I'm gonna go lightly with the, um, with the teal over the top and I'm gonna use my six inch brayer for that. And I'm, I'm switching brayers here because um, I just wanna make sure that I don't get any of that original Payne's gray in here. So I've got a nice, clean, dry brayer. So I'm gonna put the teal out over the top and we are gonna pull this whole print onto another sheet of the rice paper. So here goes. So light touch with this, stay light so that you don't stir up the burnt sienna and a little bit of it is not a big deal. So that's a nice even layer. We're gonna go smooth side down, line it up with the plate. So here we go. All right, I'm gonna peek. Okay, I think we have to wait more. Apply more pressure, be more patient. Be more patient. And we are working with a set of how many colors? 90. 90 colors. It's been like a it's been like a kids in a candy store. Look at this. We got 90 different colors of the Amsterdam acrylics. All right, let's see what we got. Okay. I think that's good. And there's the results. So. Okay, so we showed you a little bit of a sneak preview of these designs in the introduction, but we're gonna go through each one as a print, and Barb and I made copious amounts of prints, and these are our favorites with each of the new Georgia O'Keeffe collection stencils and masks. So this first one is called Jack in the Pulpit. That's a fun one. The next one is called Iris. 
another nice set of pinks. This one is called Crest. This one is called Fanfare. I like that purple and green together. This one is called Canna. And those are the five prints that I made. And Barb is now gonna show you her top five. Okay, so here is the beginnings of what I have. And Elizabeth, of course, designed these, so she's far better at the names than I am. But this one, because I have cliff notes on the back, is named Orchid, and I like this because you can see it's metallic, and it's shiny, and it sparkles, and it makes me happy. This is something that I tried, and the technique is pretty detailed, but I love the outcome of this, and again, I don't wanna screw this up. This is named One Canna Lily. You gotta love purple and complementary colors. They just work so beautifully. This one is named Big Wave. This is named, again, I'm gonna go to my notes. This is named Music. This is a little bit of a departure for me. I said to Elizabeth, I'm not normally a big fan of red, but I forced myself to pull out some red and some orange, and I went ahead and I did this print with that, and of course I brought some purple and some copper in, and you can kind of see the glimmery stuff there. I love the red. All right, you love the red. I'm learning to like the red. <laughs> Well, thanks for being here and um, thanks for joining us for gel printing. Um, we appreciate you and uh, we'll Have see you. Have fun. See you next time. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.